Alright guys, how's it going? This is WWE Movie Maker making my next video and this video is going to be all about SummerSlam 2016 in the Barclays Center, New York City, Brooklyn we are be talking about the predictions, analysis, full match, full card, all those kinds of stuff So as we get underway here, I just want you to make sure that, you know, I did upload my um my NXT TakeOver Brooklyn uh, predictions, so please make sure you check that out and talk about everything in just a short amount of time, obviously. Uh, I give predictions and I try to say, you know, what my opinions are, what the thoughts are, how they could do this in the long term and stuff like that. Please make sure you check that out. It's interesting. It really is. It gives my opinion so you can uh, uh, compare yours as well. But the big show this weekend is obviously SummerSlam. And, you know, with the matches taking place, again, the build wasn't amazing. Um, not a lot of the matches, uh, uh, for the build for a lot of matches weren't amazing. I had no problem with some of them. And, uh, you know, I feel like this show could either match ta NXT TakeOver Brooklyn or it could uh, derail, it could uh, sort of go lower and uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn could overtake this. Um, we'll see how it works out, but this weekend is all for wrestling. It's just going to be amazing. Just like Wrestlemania, except Wrestlemania was not as good as NXT TakeOver Dallas. Not one bit. Not one bit. This year, we have some sort of competition. And this is not between Raw and SmackDown. It's NXT and WWE. With rarely I say that because WWE never puts up a, a good show against NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. They, they could match it. They could do good this time. And, you know, this card is looking way better than what we saw at Wrestlemania. You know, for the second straight year, or at least, I think, uh, SummerSlam is going to outdo WrestleMania. Now, WrestleMania last year, WrestleMania 31, that was pretty. That was a pretty good show. Um, but SummerSlam was just that much better. This year, you're, no doubt, no doubt, WrestleMania was shit. SummerSlam is just going to pay up for those dues, and, and, and rightfully so. So as we get underway with the card predictions, I'm going to be reading off some information here, and I'm going to be reading off some predictions, and I'm going to compare those predictions to my predictions, and what I think is really going to happen, and what's not going to happen. So we got the first match, Owens, Jericho versus Amore and Big Cass. So the newest tag team, you know, will take on arguably the most popular duo in the company in a match that will most likely take er place early on a SummerSlam card, which is absolutely no problem. The obvious scenarios for the former uh, is the former with Owens potential turning on Jericho following a defeat to Enzo and Cass. More importantly, it would be strange to pin a loss on the such as overpairing the realest guys in the room. Yeah, so Enzo Moore and Big Cass could win either. Yeah, that's pretty much how it should go. Enzo and Big Cass. You know, they can have a stellar match, okay, not just a, uh, here we go, one-on-one, -on -one, and, you know, it's sort of slow-paced, boring, and they pin you. A stellar match, where you could have won that quickly, and you didn't. And then that's how they could turn on each other, and that's what I predi that's what I predicted before. They should be able to say that, turn on each other, because Kevin Owens has teased that so many, like, you could, see, you could hear it in his voice. You know, he doesn't really care, and that's the kind of heelish character he is, but he's going to um, turn on Chris Jericho. It just makes the most sense at this point. Now we have the next uh, tag team champions. We have the New Day versus the club. Okay, at this point, people are saying the club should win, and New Day uh, should have Biggie return, and he'll, he'll be frustrated from what has happened. I think what you can do is the club should win, because Biggie, uh, you know, uh, Kofi Kingston, Xavier was the new day won this last year at SummerSlam. They lose it this year. They've ha they've held it for a year. You know, Big E isn't here. It's sort of like the card is stacked against them. And having them lose with the amount of pressure they have makes mo more sense. And the club, the club needs some heat right now. They need some steam on them, and they should be able to, to take the tag titles. Who uh, who knows? This could lead up to a a the club versus Enzo Amore and Big ca uh, Big Cass. You know, that would be an, an amazing match to see. Or, or you can have the New Day win, and you can keep uh, that going, and you can have Enzo and Moore and Big Cass win, and they can go together as well. Either way it works, or if you want to heal a face dynamic or a face-face dynamic, it would be amazing to see the club actually gain some heat, gain some steam, you know. And, you know, with Big E's absence, this seems like the time for Anderson and Gallus to strike, and, uh, you know, get themselves ahead in the tag team division. It, it, it just needs to happen, you know. They, they haven't gone anywhere. They need this momentum. They need it 100%, 110%, 120%, 40%, uh, as much percent as possible. And, okay, next match. This is I said this pretty much yesterday, that this is going to be bullshit on the SmackDown post-show. 
Fucking, uh, this is like gonna be horrible. Carmelo, Becky Lynch, and Naomi versus Natalya, even Maria and Alexa Bliss. This is not the frick fucking way to do this. You don't put just l your whole division. And this is this is your SmackDown division, by the way, guys. Probably another one or two women, but this is your SmackDown division in a in a in a six man tag, six women tag. You don't do that. You need specific people, one on one, fighting together, build them up. So that they can at least become a legitimate threat or a legitimate face and get over with the audience. You're not going to get over when you put a bunch of people together. Because one may not get enough time than the other. People don't like tag team matches that don't have any story behind them. A one-on-one -on -one makes more sense. You know, I mean, there is no one in this, in this match that is legitimately over with the crowd. No one. Whether it's a heel, whether it's a face, no one. And so this tag team match is not going to do anybody favors. Because tag team matches can normally start off a low, slow pace. And near the end, you always have someone hitting their finisher, someone hitting their finisher. It's sort of repetitive. Repetitive is not going to get anyone over. You need si significant one-on-one -on -one matches between different women and build up storylines between those women and have them establish themselves because they need the spotlight. You're giving three, like six women. No one's going to have uh, more spotlight over the other. So they're all equal. They're all equal in spotlight, which means no one's going to get over. It's, it's as simple as that. So a mixture of experience and new blood will team up on both sides of this divide. And for what it feels like a ha hastily arranged women's division match. Who will win? This is anyone's guess. Um, it feels as if... You know what's interesting about this? I think what could really happen is... Again, Eva Marie could delay her sort of ring in ring debut and that could uh, lead to issues that could lead to uh, the number games number numbers games over them and you know the faces could win that's a prediction of Bleacher Report um, I don't see it going any other way you could have the or you can just have her debut and freaking do amazing I don't know if she will I seriously don't maybe she's been training so much rather and then she could just win that, that could happen, or it could be the total opposite, but I, I think the faces are going to win, so that the uh, heels have something to chase after, you know, they have something to prove, uh, they have a chip on their shoulder, that, that's what makes sense at this point. Another screwed up match, a made card match, so I don't really care, Roman Reigns and Rusev, I don't care about this, I might be sitting down watching it, but I don't, I feel like I know who's going to win this. Now, according to this, <laughs> they're saying Roman Reigns is going to win. <sighs> This is, where, this is where I have to disagree. Will Roman Reigns prove to be the man who ends up Rusev's lengthy and impressive reign with the United States Championship? WWE fans will hope that that isn't the case. Rusev has been a fine custodian of the championship since he won it at Extreme Rules, and his run as champion shouldn't end anytime soon. Although Reign is a sound bet to win the title at some point, SummerSlam is too soon for him. There are still some ground to cover in this rivalry so ending it now with Reigns winning the United States Championship makes little sense but yet they still predict Roman Reigns should win obviously Rusev needs to dominate okay you saw it on I said this before on my post Raw show Roman Reigns won on Raw that means you, don't, you won't have the same guy win twice because it's a meaningless match Rusev is going to win and it's going to be in sort of believable fashion I'm telling you right there the Miz and Apollo Crews IC title this is easy as shit. Apollo Crews is not going to win at this point. You know, he hasn't been built up properly. You know, he still needs time. Just like, um, you know, um, I, I, I did talk about this yesterday. And this, this is sort of way off the charts. But um, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, you have no, hey, no Way Jose versus Austin Aries, right? You have a guy uh, like Austin Aries who needs to win this. You know, No Way Jose can build, him, uh, build himself up later. The same thing in this case. The Miz needs to win this. You know, because, well, actually, he does not need to win this, but it makes the most sense because he's the heel, and Apollo Crews, again, just like No Way Jose, can build himself up after. Now, the reason why The Miz shouldn't need to win this is because the build has been so shit that I can't believe The Miz is the Intercontinental Champion. That's how bad it is. You know, he was freaking doing Miz TV with uh, Ambrose and Ziggler, when he should have been, you know, booked for something against Apollo Crews, or do something where Apollo Crews... I, I, I swear, I don't see a build in this. I haven't seen anything. I haven't. I haven't seen anything. I think there was one commercial after commercial break. They showed us ha something happening with between Miz and Apollo Cruz. Do you think I care now? You're doing this at the last moment. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, as things stand right now, it should be comfortable victory for Miz for sure. Now, 
here we get into some action. Women's Championship, Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. Sasha Banks should win because this feud should continue on after SummerSlam. Charlotte should continue to maybe uh, go after the championship, possibly until Bailey debuts. That could be an interesting way of going about it. Um, but here it says, all things considered, Sasha Banks' defense of the Women's Championship against Charlotte could be one of the matches of the night, for sure, for sure. Uh, Banks and Charlotte have had some back-and-forth moments throughout his feud, and the former uh, claimed the title a few weeks ago, and they should deliver a standout bout this weekend. But who will win? It's a delicate manner, and, and as pinning another defeat on Charlotte would do her further future would do her future title prospects no good. But if Banks lost a strap so soon after winning, that would have a determinable impact on her own career. In this instance, probably best handing Banks to win. Charlotte, um, again, believable fashion, right? I mean, did you not see how Sasha Banks and Bailey fought? And it Bailey won that match, but to still this day, I feel like, you know, they both did amazing. You know, I don't think as, oh, Bailey won and now Sasha Banks is horrible, is derailed. I don't think about that. I just think about the match itself. If that's what they can do at SummerSlam, I'm not going to think Charlotte lost, right? She put on, if she puts on an amazing match, just like WrestleMania, if she lost to WrestleMania with that amazing match that she put on, it wouldn't have been a, an issue. She did win, though. So, do something like that, I can make sure it's believable. And again, keep her um, champion so that when Bailey uh, comes on the main stage, that is when you can have that NXT TakeOver match renewed on the main roster. And what's, what's the problem with that? I mean, they've had amazing chemistry. Here is the potential st steal show, show stealer of the match. Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins, the Universal Championship. I like to call it the Uni Championship for short term. Here, can the Demon King silence Seth Rollins at SummerSlam and win Raw's hottest and news newest prize? First of all, I don't like him calling him the Demon King, call him the Demon Balor. Okay, Demon King sounds like Demon Kane, and it does not sound does not sound good. Demon Balor sounds better. It's one of the toughest matches of the night to call his victory for either man seems to make sense. You know, having Rollins win makes sense because he's the top guy, he should win, you know. Um, but Finn Balor, he is the newbie. If he beats Seth Rollins, upset and Seth Rollins could be chasing after him. And that could solidify Finn Balor as a top as another top guy in the in the roster. As it says here, you know, one on one hand having Rollins win the uni championship and becomes the first title holder would be fitting given the impact he has had both since his return from injury and during his run with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in 2015. He deserves this. He should have it. He's a top guy. He should be treated like the top guy. But Balor's explosion on the main roster has been so impressive with his promo work matching his in-ring ability that it's hard to imagine him losing this weekend. Again, um, you don't want to derail his momentum. I mean, he's gone so far. Do something in this case, right? Now, if you have Jon Stewart interfere, which I hope to God he doesn't, because he will interfere in some Seth Rollins match. I said this before. I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. Put him in the role of some sort of, I don't know, general manager or the commissioner or, you know, the guest host. Don't put him in a match because he's not going to do anything. He's going to do something. It's not going to mean anything. Did you not see what he did last year? He came to Raw and he got AA'd by John Cena and he's gone. That's it. He interfered himself in a main event match and there's no story after it. That's where WWE goes wrong. That's where they don't... They put on such a good match and they're like, Oh, how do we end this off? Put a definite definite winner. In this case, you know, Balor winning suggests, you know, WWE may go the controversial route with neither man scoring a clean victory. Now, that's going to screw this up. That's what's going to make... They, just like last year, they're going to fuck it up and it's not going to be an amazing pay-per-view. So, will it be Balor Rollins? It's difficult to predict, but to keep Rollins' pursuit of the Demon King going, perhaps, to the Irishman, may just edge out a victory. I'm going to say that again. It's difficult to predict, but to keep Rollins in pursuit of the Demon King going, perhaps the Irishman can, may get the edge out of a victory. Because the story behind this is, hmm, can Seth Rollins really beat the Demon Balor? You know, he hasn't faced anybody like this. Is it possible? Is it possible? Finn Balor will win. I'm telling you, if he does not... I don't know how they're going to go with this. I feel like Finn Balor needs to get that push at this point. Um, and people say it's too early. Well, he'll prove it to you at SummerSlam. I'm telling you right now. He'll prove your ass at SummerSlam. He'll prove it wrong. Another main event match. World title match. Ambrose and Ziggler. Again, this is just a face-face dynamic. Ambrose should win. 
Ambrose should win and Dean Ambrose should retain. Dolph Ziggler should turn heel. That's what I think. If you want, um, if you want this feud to continue after SummerSlam, um, this is the only way to go about it. Um, because this is a fresh feud. I think it should go after SummerSlam. I should think it should go past SummerSlam. Unless if you want, you know, um, John Cena, AJ Styles. I, I think for that match, AJ Styles should win. If you want Styles in line for the championship against Ambrose, you know, I think they were uh, teasing that match or, or scheduling that match for the next pay-per-view or something, you know, um, or some sort of live event after SummerSlam. That's a potential match that you could do at a pay-per-view. Um, but... If you want to use Ziggler at this point, which you should because the roster is so thin, you need people to help it grow. You do not want to use Ziggler in a uh, in the wrong way. You need to put him as a heel. He works best as a heel. Everyone works better at a heel than a face because a face starts to uh, water down really quickly if you continue to do the exact same thing over and over again. The final edition of SmackDowns prior to SummerSlam suggested the WWE World Championship contest between Ambrose and Ziggler may be better than most suspected. you damn right it's going to be. They both cut great promos at the beginning of the show on Tuesday night, and with Ziggler laying out the champion, it creates a genuine possibility he will go over. Again, normally what happens on a SmackDown or Raw, the opposite happens at a pay-per-view. Not all the time, but that's always an option. But will Ambrose title reign uh, run end at the hands of Ziggler? I don't think as of yet, because still people don't think he's a believable champion. He can put on put on a believable match in a main event match, main event caliber match, and the way they've built him up is is decently good. I think Ambrose should win this. You know, in this instant, probably not. There are other men breathing down the neck of the champion, and in the grand scheme of things, it makes more sense for him to be dropping the title to someone such as Bray Wyatt, um, which makes it a lot more sense. You know, Ziggler will put on an incredible showing that should leave him in a great position, but the Lunting Fringe has to retain. Ziggler should turn heel to create some momentum after this. Seriously. Um, and if you do not want to continue with this feud, do not continue with this feud. But, but, if you do not want to continue this feud, you still want to have Ziggler doing something. And whether that's facing Bray Wyatt or something like that. Now, as for Bray Wyatt, I feel as if he may not, he's going to be interfering in a match. And I want to talk, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But, speaking of interfering in a match, speaking of interfering in a match, John Cena versus AJ Styles. Okay. We got some talking to do about the SmackDowns. Two biggest names will settle the rivalry once and for all at SummerSlam, and logically, there can only be one winner. It's a rubber match. Well, not a rubber match. I mean, they had one on one at Money in the Bank. Then at Battleground, you had a tag team match, and now it's the last match. It's the last encounter between both of them. I wouldn't call it a rubber match. I'd call it the last, yeah, encounter between both of them. John Cena's career is moving in such a way that it seems rational for him to be putting over future main event stars in WWE for sure. And although Styles is no rookie in terms of age, he has all the credentials to ascend to the main event scene with a crucial victory over Cena. Once again, they will put on an incredible match for those watching SummerSlam, but unlike the last time when Cena scored a win at Battleground, Styles should be the victor. You know, if he goes over clean, the sky is over the limit on the blue brand for the phenomenal one, AJ Styles will win. Or, if WWE wants to go with the con controversial ways, The Undertaker was rumored to be at SummerSlam and could possibly should be showing up to um, start booking or start teasing a match at WrestleMania against John Cena. So he could interfere. There could be a ref bump. He could interfere. Something of that nature. But knowing that this is, you know, it's, it's vital for both men, you know, to do this. It's vital for both men. My other, my, the other way this could possibly go is, you know, AJ Styles could win because it's vital for both men to actually put on an amazing show here and, you know, be, be another potential steel show, show stealer match. But it's, another, it's, it's not a no DQ match, okay? It's not really likely for that sort of thing to happen, and if it does, it sort of it leaves us leave, it's, it leaves us questioning the match. You know, if the if Undertaker does come out and the referee is down, you know, you know. It's a controversial win with Styles or whatever. What could happen is Styles does win. Styles does win in this case, and Cena goes to SmackDown and says, "Styles, you did it. You proved me wrong and all that stuff." And the Undertaker could show up if he's not going to be appearing at SummerSlam, which I think at this point he could after an amazing match, something like that happens. Um, 
At the end of the match, you can have Undertaker appear if you want. But I don't want this match to be screwed up by some retarded ass finish. Um, I feel like it should be an amazing 20 minute match for sure, 20 to 30 minute match. Um, the finish should be definite. Um, if it's not, you know, it could leave some fans in uh, in awe. I would have no problem with seeing another feud start, but on SmackDown, the Undertaker could return because there's rumors of him going to SmackDown. You know, it depends which way you go. You know, Cena could be defeated. Man, what am I going to do now? Undertaker, WrestleMania match. There you go. So either way, that at SummerSlam, you want to screw the finish up, which I don't think is the best possible uh, 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 way to go about it, or have him appear on SmackDown. You know, this match could be. Again, another show stealer match. And then the main event of the evening. Orton and Lesnar. This, just like um, just like many other matches, you know, is a controversial match. It's a match where either one could go. Um, I said this before as well. Orton and Lesnar, if you want Orton to take over, because Lesnar has been this dominant guy, right? Um, I think what you could do is, you know, a guy like Samoa Joe who's calling up Brock Lesnar. You know, the new guys should be the ones to beat Brock Lesnar. Because what happens is they instantly, just like that, become, you know, the next top guy. That's how good, that's how great a win over Brock Lesnar could make them. Um, Randy Orton, in this case, when Randy Orton invaded Raw and SmackDown, and Brock, uh, and, and Brock Lesnar invaded SmackDown, you know, the following night, two weeks ago, fans looked set for a huge interbred war. Interbrand war. You know, does Lesnar's huge unbeaten streak continue at the expense of the Viper? That seems to be the safe bet. But with Orton standing at reputation in WWE, it's impossible to rule out the shock win for the master of the RKO. Because they have made this RKO feel as it's, you know, one RKO is going to finish you. That's not going to be the case. If he hits the RKO, or d Brock Lesnar is not going to go for the one, two, three. Okay, seriously. You know how after how many spears he got at WrestleMania 31, how many spears he got by Roman Reigns and he kicked out, two spears kicked out. The RKO is sort of a finisher, like it's sort of a, it's a ven, it's a venomous sort of poison that strikes you, and that's the story behind this. Could he, could he get stay down for the one, two, three? I don't think so. I don't think so. There's plenty of potential for WWE to have a controversial finish, but all the signs suggest that it will be Lesnar winning by whatever means possible. That could be the Beast as a heel and cement Orton as a babyface following his injury from his return from injury. The Beast, you know, he's not really a heel or face. He's just Brock Lesnar. He's an anti-hero, you could kind of say. And Brock Lesnar will most likely win this match. Bray Wyatt has been speculating to return and, okay, he's, he's already there, to interfere in the Orton match. And this could set, you know, he beats Orton and Lesnar will win. I feel as if there could be another interference in the Finn Balor and uh, Seth Rollins match as well, where the Balor Club does come out and, you know, destroys Seth Rollins at the end, possibly. Or, you know, during the match where he turns heel, Finn Balor turns heel, and, you know, the club could... Um, win the tag team championships and then go on, you know, Finn Balor could win the, t the, the the Universal Championship, you know, beat up Seth Rollins, and you have the Bo the Balor Club on top with all the titles. You know, that could be a, something on Raw or something on Summer, Summer, SummerSlam that happens. You know, the interference with the Balor Club or The Undertaker or Bray Wyatt, all these interferences could, could happen. The way I'd see about going it is, you know, for each match, I'd love to see a definite winner to be honest, but for storyline purposes, Cena and Styles, that should just be Styles winning. Finn Balor and Seth Rollins, Seth, Finn Balor should win that, and something with the Balor Club should happen. The club should also win, you know, if you want the Balor Club to, you know, be this uh, team that is dominant with all the titles, just like something, just like the Shield, you know, now they have the tag team titles and the Universal title, right, the major Raw title. And as for the Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt interfering. Because this is going to be a match where WWE is going to be like, hmm, who should we put over? The Beast makes the most sense. Because he, you know, unless you want to deal with his momentum, and again have, you know, finally say, you know what, screw it. You know, we need guys to go over. You can't have Brock Lesnar keep everything holding up. Um, but again, if you have Brock Lesnar win, it, it leads 
for the new superstar to try to beat Brock Lesnar, and that will give them even more push. Because right now, Orton's already he's already solidified as a superstar. Guys like Samoa Joe, again, who've been calling out Brock Lesnar, who might be on Raw, might be drafted to Raw, you can have them face off in a match, or any new guy, right? Any NXT guy or someone have them face off in a match when they get debuted on the roster against Brock Lesnar, or maybe even at WrestleMania, and they could win. They could go over against Brock Lesnar. That solidifies them as a star. Just like that. That's what you need. Orton doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. So, that is my predictions. Those are my predictions for SummerSlam, ladies and gentlemen. I feel as if, um, you know, it's going to be an amazing card. I just hope they don't do so many of those uh, interferences. Only if they make sense. Only if they've been matching the rumors and reports that have been going around. Undertaker, Bray Wyatt, you know. You don't want to screw it up with Jon Stewart, for sure not. Uh, I think the Ballard Club standing tall at, at SummerSlam could look amazing. Be amazing, for sure. Um... Although there hasn't been any tease between Finn Balor and the, and the club at this point. But um, if the New Day does win, then there's going to be no Balor club, uh, I guess, reunion is what, I'm trying to, is what I'm trying to get at. No reunion. So, and Finn Balor will still ultimately go as champion if you want to put him in a singles run. If you don't want to turn him here at this point, that's also another option. You know, they have many options to go, but I ultimately feel like Finn Balor will win and the Balor club could do something. You know, Styles should win clean. Undertaker should possibly appear on SmackDown, unless he does appear at SummerSlam. And Bray Wyatt should interfere because knowing WWE, I'd, I'd rather see. Personally, I like to see Orton win. I just want to see Brock Lesnar lose his first match at least. But knowing WWE, Brock Lesnar could possibly win. My prediction is Brock Lesnar will win. I want Orton to win, but a prediction is a prediction, like a legitimate, logical prediction. Brock Lesnar will win, and. Um, it can have, you know, why interfere, you know, um, whether it's after the match or during the match. Um, but again, none of these are like no DQ matches, so, you know, interference can cause a disqualification, and that leaves the, the, the viewer, you know, with questions. So interferences aren't the best in this case. I want to see definite winners, I want to see a solid SummerSlam card, SummerSlam match, just like NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, you know. You have to have the story in the match. You don't need anybody interfering, nothing like that. You can do that on your Raw and SmackDowns. So ladies and gentlemen, it feels like SummerSlam has so many ways of going about it. So many. Just like NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, which will be amazing. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in to my review, my uh, predictions, all that sort of stuff. Um, I feel like this is how it's going to go. Dean Ambrose is going to retain the world title on SmackDown. Finn Balor is going to win the Universal title on Raw. The Balor Club could happen. Ziggler could turn heel. You have so many ways of going about it after to backlash to the class of champions. We'll see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. But thank you very much for tuning in to this uh, prediction for SummerSlam. See you all later.